Hi, this is Mark Laughlin with RaggedyEdge.net. We are here in Wyoming waiting for the results of the election before we head south. And uh, unfortunately, it's gotten really cold, uh, unexpectedly cold. Uh, in fact, it may be record breaking cold, record snow in many parts of the state. That kind of cold. And for Wyoming, that's pretty freaking cold. Now, so we're here we are, we're staying in our motor home. We're behind our kid's house, but uh, we're mooch docking. And uh, one of the advantages of, that we like about this motor coach is that we can keep our slides in. So we've, uh, we have our rear bedroom slide back there. It is all the way in. And then we also have our, our uh, main, I guess you'd call it uh, the kitchen area slide. It, we can keep it in as well and have pretty much access to everything that we need. Uh, you know, we can get from one end of the coach, no problem. Uh, it does limit access to certain parts of our pantry, some of the cupboards, but we just have to work around that. If we need things that are in the pantry, we'll just go to the grocery store and buy it again until things warm up. Okay, here we are inside the coach, and here's uh, here around the, cock the cockpit area. And you see the driver's station there. And we've got the, our curtain, kind of helps hold up that uh, the bubble insulation. Here's where we've got the roll of it prepped to close off this side once the sun goes down. And then we've got this curtain, uh, which uh, is just kind of a temporary curtain rod here, which we use to actually block off the whole cockpit as well and to help isolate the rest of the coach from the colder area up here. Now, as we move back, we see with the slides, even with the slides in, we do have. Uh, full access pretty much to almost everything. There's some cabinets in, in over here that we can't get access to with the slide in. And another thing we do uh, when we're this, this cold is we keep all of our, uh, a lot of the cabinets open anywhere that there's plumbing. And we see here in the, in the bathroom, I've got, um, we've got our sink cabinets are left open. There's our little uh, sketchy heater with the little bubble wrap thing. We actually tested that at first. Uh, one reason we ran that last night with the little bubble wrap insulation around it, we wanted to see if that actually, if the bubble wrap actually did prove fire resistant and could hold up to that little heater. Here we have our, our closet open. We have, uh, there is some plumbing in there that if you had a, a washer and dryer, so there's uh, water pipes in there, so we left that open. We are keeping our head open. Uh, and even though we've got the, the little cushion thing up there uh, sealing off the vent, we keep the head open because we want the furnace air to get in here and flow all around and help because there is plumbing down underneath there so we help keep that cool or keep that warm as well. Now here we are back into the bedroom slide with the slide in. It's a little bit awkward. Um, you know, you have to climb over, you know, I have to climb over my wife when I want to go to the bathroom or something. And here we are, we've, right now we've got this window here open. Uh, we don't have the insulation in place, but we do have the roll ready. Once the sun goes down, I'll be putting that in place to uh, help insulate the coach a little bit better. And here we are walking from the, the rear of the coach, and we're closet open, heads open. A little sketchy heater with the insulation wrap around it with the cord that runs up to the one of the few powered outlets in the coach right now since we've got everything else shut off. I do have we have the vacuum cleaner sitting here just to be kind of a, a barricade and a reminder, a safety thing, so you don't trip over this uh, this uh, power cord kind of a trip hazard. <laughs> if not other hazards as well. Um, and there we go galley sink. We've got to leave that cabinet open so furnace air can run under there. There's our, our little remaining sample bit of insulation bubble wrap. Um, one thing we will be doing this evening is at the door, these steps here, underneath the steps there's very minimal insulation under that. And last night this, there was snow and a little bit of water left on those steps and by morning that was still snow and, and the water was ice. So tonight what we're going to do is we're going to use these cushions on the back of our, of our sofa to basically place down and bridge over top of that and kind of kind of seal that off a little bit. Uh, the door does okay. We do a little bit of uh, 
leakage around here maybe someday you know we really want to get hardcore but in order to retain the ability to get in and out easy we're not really sealing this off much so this window we do have a piece of bubble bath ready for it and then back up here in the cockpit we've got a roll ready and uh, the north side of the coach insulation is already in place and then also we do have this uh, or to monitor things going on in our basement here we can see the basement is currently at 41 degrees and this uh, the temperature sensor for this is actually in the uh, like the sewer and uh, water fill station area and that's where we have this the single 60 watt lamp so that's what's keeping that uh, warm and hopefully this other when this, uh, this other little heater that's on the, the water tank locker will uh, make, you know eventually the heat from that will kind of bleed over and help supplement the heat for this area along with the uh, uh, clamp lamp that's on the other side of the coach uh, so anyway uh, last night we did the uh, we did uh, testing and uh, we started off running the furnace pretty hard we actually had this up to 70 degrees and it was actually kind of uncomfortable it was almost too hot inside of here but we were basically trying to wanted to make make sure for certain that our basement stayed warm enough and then throughout the night I got up every couple of hours and dropped the temperature down on the furnace until we got down to where we like it we like it for sleeping at about 64 degrees and as we dropped this down we found that our basement temperature did not uh, did not fall with it so we're really happy about that it's uh, so we'll see how this does when the serious really really cold gets here last night only got down to minus or not minus down to 12 degrees and uh, here in a couple days we're going to be overnight low of minus seven so a little bit colder temperatures coming and uh, we're reporting a follow-up video how well this all works and uh, potentially we'll have a follow-up video on how to do how to repair your water pipes if they freeze hopefully we don't but that's in that's in the offing if things go south here now keeping uh, our pipes from freezing that's our probably our number one concern of course we do want to make sure we've got enough propane so we got our propane tanks filled yesterday completely topped off and uh but the other thing is power 110 power and uh mooch docking you don't you know we don't have a, you know a nice 50 amp circuit here to, to connect to we've got a simple 110 15 amp circuit with a GFCI uh, plug there we got a splitter cord running from there to underneath this um, this Home Depot bucket just to kind of keep the snow and rain and whatever off and inside that there's a, a three-way plug we have uh, one of them going to our our house power cord a big 50 amp it's an adapter to a 50 amp cord but we do have most of the uh, uh, got most of the circuit breakers in the coach off except just for a few select ones uh, mainly the battery charger and a, a couple of outlets <clears throat> and we got our microwave we're leaving that off and we're not going to be using our cure ray we've got to keep our power consumption to a minimum because we're really pushing the limits of this small plug here now we do have another cord here that's uh, an extension cord that's running from a splitter there and that's running into uh, to some devices that are providing some heat to the basement of our motor coach uh, and in this one locker here we've got uh, this is our you know our plumbing and sewer locker and inside there we have uh, you know our water connections and uh, the sewer hoses come out of there and so basically I've added insulation inside of there and on this locker we have a 60 watt uh, clamp lamp inside there to provide some uh, some heat to that area and with that insulation that's been doing pretty good so far now further over here we have this power this kind of a horrific you know not exactly uh, electrician approved all these connections extension cords and stuff and splitters but uh, one of them goes into this one uh, this locker here where our water tank is along with um, the sw uh, valves to switch from uh, the main tank to doing like a uh, antifreeze flush now we've actually changed our use the antifreeze intake that is actually connected to a uh, a reserve tank so I do have one of the little uh, it's a little tiny we have um, I did insulate that also with this bubble wrap insulation inside that locker 
And then inside there we've got uh, one of these uh, Honeywell heat buds. The little tiny personal space heater, I guess you'd call it. And uh, it's a maximum of 200 and uh, I think it was a 250, 250 watts. And on low setting, it's even less than that. I think maybe 150 or 175. And which is pretty important for us keeping our power requirements down so that we can, so that we don't float, throw the breaker on that uh, little 110 circuit. Now this is the insulation we're using down in the, uh, the lockers. And it's just basically a bubble wrap with a, like a radiant barrier or something on it. And uh, it has made a huge improvement in uh, the ability of our, our lamps and little heaters to keep those, uh, those lockers, to keep those lockers warm and, you know, from freezing. Now we have also put, uh, used that, this material is also up in many of our windows. And here we have it in the front window, windshield of the coach. Now on the south facing side, we currently have all our windows open. And we've got, a, I do have a roll of this stuff up in there ready to put in for nightfall. But during the daytime with the, uh, with the bright sunshine here, uh, we're currently getting enough just solar heat on the south side with all these windows open there, or, or uninsulated that uh, basically the heater, the furnace is not having to hardly run at all and it's even though it is 22 degrees out here at the moment. So uh, we'll see how this works out. The big test is going to be in a couple days when uh, we hit uh, a negative uh, overnight will be a negative minus seven and negative seven degrees and uh, it's going to be interesting to see if if our our uh, our heat, the, this insulation, and our little devices keep things warm enough. So, I'll put links down below if I can find a link to where you can find this stuff. Uh, we got some of this at uh, Menards. Or, I think it was Menards. Also got these at Menards. If I can find it on Amazon, I'll include links to Amazon on it. But uh, should better find it locally at your hardware store. It's Mark Laughlin with RaggedyEdge.net. Thanks for watching.